we will now talk about few more disorders and these two disorders which we are discussing now we will discuss them simultaneously arteriosclerosis and the next one which we want to discuss is atherosclerosis there is a very minute difference between these two and that is why we are discussing these two simultaneously arteriosclerosis in this there is deposition of fats especially it is believed that it is cholesterol but recent studies are showing that cholesterol doesn't depo get deposited in the blood vessels but we are still waiting for the final uh, conclusion but recently it was reported that the triglyceride fats or saturated fats do get deposited but not the cholesterol part of it but here it is said that it is due to deposition of fats like cholesterol and calcium salts because of this there are two things which are happening one the thickness of the blood vessel changes it becomes more rigid and its lumen gets narrow so wall becomes thick the wall gets rigid and there is narrowing of the lumen of the blood vessel but this is specially due to deposition of calcium salts along with some fats now when this happens and there's one more reason for it it is also age related so this arteriosclerosis is also age related because when we were talking about these things earlier we said age is one factor where the blood vessels and their walls they lose their elasticity they become more rigid and that is why the blood pressure increases so this is one reason age related because of which the rigidity of the blood vessels wall increases and that condition is known as arteriosclerosis in case of atherosclerosis number one normally whenever we talk of atherosclerosis it is associated with coronary arteries so normally this term is used with coronary arteries and coronary artery is the one which is supplying the blood to the wall of the heart itself now here also there is narrowing of lumen narrowing of lumen and this narrowing of lumen normally again takes place due to fat deposition here there is no mention of calcium salts so this is due to fat deposition again when we are using the term fat in most of the places we find it written as cholesterol which is responsible for it and as i said the recent studies are saying that cholesterol doesn't get deposited in the blood vessels so in arteriosclerosis the wall becomes thick rigid and there is narrowing because of this deposition here also there is narrowing of lumen due to deposition and it is seen that whenever certain things get deposited in the wall of the blood vessel <coughs> it changes into a hard fibrous plaque so that formation so now if this is the blood vessel that we are talking of and here slowly and gradually there is something gets deposited say in the wall there is this fat deposition and there is a tendency that this fat would get surrounded by a fibrous tissue so this becomes a hard structure which is known as plaque now as we have talked talk these two conditions which are associated with the blood vessel and narrowing of the lumen so only this much space is available for the blood to flow 
so blood flow would be restricted or it would be less to that particular organ or part of the heart where this blood is being supplied. How is it detected that there is a block, there is some kind of narrowing? The process is known as angiography. What is done in angiography? It is actually a radio autography. The technique is radio autography. What exactly is done in this technique is an opaque dye is injected. Opaque dye is injected. Now, let us understand what exactly is going to happen here. Say we draw this blood vessels. Say these are the blood vessels. This is the main artery. Then it divides into branches even finer branches. So when this opaque dye is injected, it is observed on the monitor. It can be traced or tracked. So when the, suppose the clot is or the blockage is here somewhere, then the dye would be seen moving. We can trace this dye moving in all these blood vessels. And here we would see that after a particular place, the dye movement stops. That tells us that this is the place where there is block. And depending upon how big or small the block is, we need to go for the alternative procedure. If the blockage is less like this, then the technique or the procedure which is performed is known as angioplasty. In angioplasty, what would be done is, Suppose we take the same situation. There are two processes by which this angioplasty can be done. A catheter is introduced and this catheter can have two things. It can have a balloon or it can have a stent. A balloon is a simple membranous structure. It is sent in. Suppose this balloon is sent here and it is inflated with helium inflated with helium. So this balloon when gets inflated it starts pushing this plaque downwards and because of this pressure this plaque might even break and after the plaque breaks the diameter is again normal or the lumen is again normal the balloon can be removed after that. So this technique would be called the ballooning in which through a catheter, again, this was the original plaque, the balloon was introduced using the catheter, it is inflated with the help of helium and because of this pressure, the plaque is going to damage. This is one technique of angioplasty. In the second technique, let me draw one more blood vessel here and say this is the plaque. Again, it has become fibrous. So, a stent is introduced. A stent, we can compare it with a spring-like structure. It is actually to provide support to the membrane so that the membrane can withstand that blood pressure or force. So, again, with the help of a catheter, a stent would be introduced. A stent is going to be a spiral spring-like structure. And when it is sent here, this plaque again is pressed plus there is a support which is provided to the membrane so that it is pushed slightly outwards. So because of this, the membrane will become slightly like this and this stent is going to provide support. So angioplasty is performed when the blockage or this plaque is not that big. The blood supply is still taking place, though the lumen has become narrower, but by either inserting a balloon, inflating it, the plaque can be damaged or with the help of uh, the stent, an extra support can be provided to that blood vessel so that the lumen can be slightly widened. <coughs> if the blockage is big, more than 90%, for example, so 
let us take one more blood vessel here and the pro procedure would be called bypass. So if this is the blood vessel and again due to this deposition there is plaque formation which becomes fibrous and you can say there is 90% or 100% blockage. So there is absolutely no blood supply which can reach here. In this situation, these kind of techniques are not going to work. Then the only option is bypass this. That means, say this is the blood vessel. The flow of blood is coming from here. But because of this blockage, it cannot reach in this region. So a graft is implanted. The graft is going to come from before the blockage area to after the blockage area. So basically what we are doing here is we are diverting that flow of blood so that this blockage can be avoided. So now the blood will go from this graft and will reach the organ where the blood was supply was not reaching. Condition is there is blockage. If it is less angioplasty is performed and if the blockage is more then the only option is bypass and this is known as a graft. Graft is again a blood vessel. It is actually a blood vessel and it can be a vein or an artery which is taken from the patient's body itself. So the patients from patient's body some artery or vein can be taken and that can be used as a graft. So that depends upon the situation of the patient, age of the patient, there's so many parameters. But the two conditions, arteriosclerosis and atherosclerosis, both result into narrowing of lumen due to deposition of either fat or along with calcium salts. If the blockage is less, the procedure which is performed first to detect it is angiography. And by angiography, if it is found out that the blockage is like 40%, 30%, then angioplasty would be performed. And if the blockage is more, say about 80% or even 100%, then only option left is bypass. So by this, the blood supply to that affected organ can be uh, revived or it can be again uh, maintained. One more term that is angiology. Angiology is the term given to study of blood vessels. Study of blood vessels is known as angiology. So these are certain disorders related with the blood vessels and the procedures by which these kind of problems can be taken care of.